Bureau of Tax Information, Maryland Small Business Retirement Savings Board authorization. Favor report is amended, adopted. Recognizing the order of the special order. <laughs> General Lady from Baltimore County. Thank you, Madam Speaker. There is an amendment on the way, so is this the last bill in the calendar? Yes. Um, would we be able to special order this one more day? It is not my amendment. Um, Mr. Floor Leader, we spoke, and I want to publicly thank you for working without my questions on this bill, but because I have the floor because I special ordered it, another person on the floor has ordered an amendment and would um, like the opportunity to offer that if this is the end of business, perhaps until tomorrow. Floor Leader. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, I have had an opportunity to speak with the gentleman that is offering an amendment, and uh, I will not accept the amendment, so I would not want to hold this bill another day. Um, thank you, Madam Speaker. I will yield to my colleague from Calvert County. Madam gentleman Speaker. from Calvert. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, so then I have some questions then on the bill for the floor leader, if I may. Floor leader. Today? Yes, sir. Um, so there is a Maryland Small Business Retirement Savings Board, and that board is a state-run agency. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And that state-run agency is responsible for um, presumably contacting businesses of all size, sizes, usually small businesses, that don't themselves have retirement plans for their employees. Is that correct? Correct. The, okay. the intent of the bill uh, is legis legislation to increase awareness for the program to make it easier for businesses to participate in the program itself. Gotcha. So my understanding is, at least from the businesses in Calvert County, they're receiving notices from this state organization, state employees and so forth, um, as to whether their employees, the employer's employees, want to participate in this program and then the employees have to affirmatively opt out. They're assumed opted in unless they opt out. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so they are outreach to businesses anywhere from two to three times uh, as well as they have the option if they receive emails to be able to opt out of those emails. Okay. So now we go to the bill. Now that we know what the, now we know what the, this board does. Now we go to the bill and the bill says that tax information can be shared by the comptroller concerning the employer to a third party. Is that correct? You're correct. Okay, so that's correct. And the tax information that would be shared by the comptroller to the third party, which is not a state agency, would include, among other things, the employer identification number, the name of the business entity, you know, the small business, the business address, the mailing address, the business entity contact name, email address, phone number, um, and pretty much anything that the comptroller feels like they can provide what? to that board that's not currently prohibited under federal law. Does that sound right? I'm that's just following what we do. Okay. So, my concern with the bill and the amendment that I ordered, and I'm kind of shocked that the amendment's not here and that is an issue, by the way, um, is that the employer has not authorized the comptroller to share its information with a third party that is not a state agency. And so my amendment was really simple, namely that the comptroller needs to get written permission from the employer to share any information with any third party that's not a state agency. That was a really simple common sense amendment. I'm just curious why that's the problem. Listen, there are other states that do the same thing that we're doing right now. Uh, states like California, Colorado, Delaware, Illinois, Maine, New Jersey, New York, Oregon, and other states. Once again, the intent of the bill is to create awareness of the program. This is a new program here in the state. Right now, we only have 12,000 people that have entered into the program. The data that is entered uh, would cause a hardship on the comptroller's office. 
should we ask for a waiver to be opt-in or opt-out. There is no other programs that we do here in the state that has an opt-in, opt-out measure, and for those reasons, we would not accept the amendment. We're talking about the employer's tax information that you're sharing with a third party. So, you know, this is apples to oranges. We're not talking about sharing the employer's, uh, just their business address. We're talking about sharing very private, personal information that the employer has not given the state the authority to share. I mean, when I file my, ta my taxes for my small business to the state of Maryland, my assumption is that it's filed blindly and that no one gets to see um, my name and that's, that's all you know blind and so forth. This is actually opening it up and saying, oh no, we want you to see everything. Yeah, the information that is provided is simply the employer's information. It does not include any financial information, anything like that, or everything that is given is already public knowledge. And how about the concerns about data? Since this information is being shared with a third party, and that third party is not a stage, state agency, it's actually a private company, is that correct? That's correct. And that private company is then using that information to assume, presumably market this program to the, the small businesses. What's stopping that third party from using that information and sharing it amongst their other companies and using it to market other products for which the employer never authorized the state to provide that information to begin with? Yeah, the Comptroller's Office has the uh, authority to provide limitations on any information that is given. So we're entrusted that the Comptroller will be able to do their job. Got it. And it looks to me like the amendment is here, if I'm correct. So I believe the clerk has the amendment, and I would, it's the amendment that we discussed, and I do want to offer the amendment, irrespective of, because I think this is important, because I do think this is going to be a problem. I do. And so, Madam Speaker, I have an amendment, amendment at the desk. It's amendment number 0086 one Amendment number one. Move so much be considered the reading of the amendment, Madam Speaker. So ordered. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a really common sense amendment. Really should be a friendly amendment, and that is you need to get the employer's consent before you share the employer's tax information with a third party that is a non-state agency. It's a third party private contractor. Remember what we're sharing. The comptroller, you file your taxes as your small business with the comptroller. The comptroller is like, oh, well, we want to share this information with a third party. The information is shared with the third party, and that information is the business name, the business address, the federal employee identification number. Identification number. The business address, the email of the business the contact names and phone numbers and any other information that they can think of that they can provide legally under federal law. So this amendment is very simple. It simply says you need to get the employer's consent before you share their information with a third party. It seems kind of commonsensical to me. Um, it's a very, very dangerous precedent for this for this state to start sharing personal information with third parties without the consent of the entity or the individual. So for all those reasons, Madam Speaker, I move the amendment. Thank you. Madam Speaker. Yeah. I yield. Floor leader. I yield. Majority Thank you, Madam leader. Speaker. Majority leader. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Just for the benefit of the body and so many new members, you should all have your floor systems up, and I just want to explain at the very top of the blue bar, it has the amendment. You can just click on the link uh, to be able to read the amendment. And if you're in the bill and you click on the amendments tab, the amendment that the uh, gentleman has introduced uh, will also be there as well. So if you want to follow along, uh, uh, that's, uh, that's how you do that. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Floor leader. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, listen, I think I said it before that we will reject this amendment uh, simply because of the reasons that I stated before. The data that is shared is not any financial data or anything that is pertinent that will um, impede the, the business itself. The data that is given uh, is similar to data that is done by other states. Uh, and the intent of the bill is basically to create a pro, uh, an awareness program for business to participate into this. If there is an opportunity that the comptroller's office 
can always reject what is being sent out at any given time. And I ask the body to stick with the committee and reject this amendment and pass House Bill 86. Madam Speaker. The gentleman from Anne Arundel. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I stand in support of this amendment now that I look at it. We're giving out an employer's identification number. When you start a business, that EIN is equivalent to your social security number. So now, if we are going to provide a third party company with our EIN number, the address, and every important piece of information about a business, you're essentially, a lot of people start LLCs, and an LLC is a pass through. So when you're talking about this, you are now providing to a third party all the information that is needed for a business to apply for a loan, apply for a grant, apply for everything that you could apply for as an individual. All of that private information is now being disclosed to a third party. If it were to fall into, into another company's hand or another person's hands, they can easily use this nefariously to apply for loans, to totally wreck a, a company by getting loans or buying other businesses or buying another, um, uh, buying another company. This is a dangerous piece of legislation. I, I applaud the intent of it, but to provide this information is dangerous and can lead to serious consequences for uh, many of our Maryland small businesses. That came, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker. Floor, floor. floor leader. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Listen, EIN numbers are protected from the third party, uh, so that information is already safeguarded. Once again, the Comptroller's Office will be able to uh, withdraw uh, anybody at any given time on the information that is shared. And once again, we reject the amendment. Madam Speaker. Gentleman from Southern Maryland. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Could a floor lawyer please rise for a question? Floor leader. Hey, good morning. Yes, sir. Um, is there anything in the bill that, that makes it illegal or prohibits the Maryland Small Business Retirement Savings Board or the Comptroller's Office from sharing this information? No. Nothing? Okay. Thank you. Madam Speaker. General Lady from Harford. Thank, thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, could the floor leader answer a quick question about sort of the way this might work? So let's say I have a business and this third party contacts me. What, what happens? Do they contact me once annually? How does it work? Right, so right now they can, you can be contacted either by email or direct mail anytime from uh, two to three times per month or six times out of a year. Wow, okay, and, and there's, is there an opt-out for me as the business owner? Say that again, I'm sorry. Is there an opt-out option, like let's, is there at the bottom, you know how you get a yes. text message and you can like opt out of the texts? Yes, it is. You can opt out? Yes, sir, okay. yes, ma'am. Thank you. Gentlelady lady from Harvard. Madam Speaker, um, I'm just gonna say this, it's not, Basically, we have a real problem with identity theft in the state. We have a problem with uh, seniors being constantly bombarded by emails and phone calls. And I don't know how they know you're, whether you're a senior or you're a graduate. I think we're, we're, basically, I think we should try to protect data and we should not be giving data away. And so I, I would say this is a really good amendment because we, we have problems all over the place and I, as far as identity theft and people being bombarded with, with untruths so people can get into their money one way or the other. So I, 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 have, I support this amendment wholeheartedly. Thank you, Madam Speaker. On the amendment. Question before the House is the adoption of the amendment. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? No. Roll call, Madam Speaker. Gentlemen support, roll call. Kirk. Madam Speaker. Sorry. Madam Speaker. Yep. <laughs> is everyone recorded? Their vote? 
clerk will take the call. 99 in the affirmative. Negative. 